You know, we really are in the end of time as we know it on planet Earth. God doesn't have time, but we're in the end of time as we know it on planet Earth. All over the world, I believe, and we hear prophets are declaring that Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. And, and there's somehow or other, there's a stirring or there's an expectancy, there's even excitement, there's anticipation that something big is about to happen. You know, I was, I was thinking, uh, I was going around walking the other day and, and I'm just saying something good is about to happen. Something good is about to happen. And God challenged me. He said, hey, change what you're saying. Something good is happening. <laughs> Something good is happening right now. Something good is happening. Whether, you're, whether we're experiencing it or not, something good is happening. There's somebody somewhere coming to Jesus Christ right now as, we're, as we're, something good's happening. Somebody's getting healed right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody's getting delivered. Uh, some uh, families are being restored right now in Jesus' name. There's a great restoration that's happening. Something good is happening right now right now on this planet Earth. And, and I believe that something big is about to happen. It's happening. And I'm sure it will. I, I know that you do. I believe that Australia is set for a revival. We have to have a revival, friend. We don't need any more religion. We need a revival. We need a restoration of truth. We need the truth of God's Word to be restored where men become men and women become women. Today, we don't know what's man and what's woman. Amen. Man doesn't know what's going on, and, but anyhow, Australia is set for revival. The big question is, what will cause this avalanche of God's healing power, of God's anointing, of God's presence? What will, what will cause this avalanche of souls being uh, brought into the kingdom of God? What will cause it to happen? What will bring it to pass? I believe that this... I believe in the realm of the Spirit, things are going to happen. Something is going to happen, amen? There's something that's going to happen. In John 16, 7, this is what the Word of God says. It says, nevertheless, I tell the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. This is Jesus speaking. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is already judged. How many people are glad that the devil's already judged? He's judged, he's been convicted, and it's all over. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Still I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Things that God wants to reveal to the church that, that haven't been revealed before. You know, the Bible speaks, of, it's a scripture there that confuses a lot of people, and I hear it misquoted many times. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. And so people think, well, we haven't got a clue what God's going to do. But if you read, it goes, but, but, everybody say, but, but God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. For what man knows the ways of man except the Spirit of man that's in him? There's only one way you're going to know the things of God, and that's the Spirit of God in you. Your intellect will not tell you what God's about to do. Your intellect will tell you anything but what God's about to do because it, your intellect can only agree with logic and logic has to go out the door when it comes to the things of God. Laying hands on the sick is the most stupid thing I've ever heard in the natural, but I've seen people delivered. I've seen people healed. I've seen people set free because of something that seems so stupid to the natural mind. This natural mind is an enmity to the things of the Spirit. It's an amazing thing that this time that we're living in, we need a fresh revelation. We need a fresh understanding. We, we, need, we need the Word of God to be opened up to us. And, and it says that the rule of this world is judged, and I've still got many things that I want to say to you. It says, however, when He, 
the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. And he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. And I believe, friends, it's time for the people of God to start to stand up and declare what God says and not what the world system is trying to say today. We don't have to compromise. We don't have to stand up for, for homosexuality. We don't have to have a, another standard because of the world system today. We need to have God's standard and say sin is sin and sin will take you to hell. Compromise will not deliver you and set you free. You might feel good because you have, a, have some feel good feeling because you feel that it's accepted. But I want to tell you it will not be accepted in the kingdom of God. God's already spoken about it, amen? He's already made judgment on it. He's already said what he's got to say about it. There's nothing else to say, but friend, we need to be delivered. We need to be set free. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. In John 14, 16, it says this. It says, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. Another helper, amen. <laughs> How many people are glad about the helper? that he may abide with you forever. You see, doctrines and philosophies and traditions today say that the Holy Spirit outpouring went out with the disciples. My Bible says that he's going to stay with me forever. He said, it's better for you if I go, because if I go, I'm going to send the helper. I'm going to send one. And then he speaks to us. He says that he, when he comes, he's going to lead us and guide us into all truth. Amen. And he's going to abide with us forever and ever and ever and ever. I don't know about you, but that's worth a shout. Amen. That's worth a shout. He's going to stay with us forever and ever. He will never, ever leave me more, nor forsake me. He's going to stay with me. He's going to abide with me. I thank God for that. I thank God will do that. And I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth. Thank God we have a helper. Thank God we've got a comforter, amen. Thank God we've got somebody that wants to lead us and guide us into all truth. What an amazing thing that is. In Acts chapter 1, uh, verse 4, this is what the Bible says. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to part from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard of me. But John truly baptized with you with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Wait. Tarry. Wait. You know what? The church has learned to wait <laughs> and wait and wait and wait. If you talk to so many people, they're all waiting. They're all waiting for something. We are good waiters. We are good carriers, amen. But I got news. The Holy Ghost has come, hallelujah. We don't have to wait anymore, amen. But now the Holy Ghost is still is here and he's been outpoured and he wants to lead us and he wants to guide us, but we're still waiting. <laughs> well, I don't know what we're waiting for. Some supernatural manifestation perhaps, some sign in the sky, writing in the clouds. I don't know, an appearance of an angel. I, whenever I found that an angel turned up or Jesus turned up, the people were terrified. <laughs> I know. I, I, sometimes I'm praying on my own in the shed and in the dark and that is a bit late. And, and I'm praying. I say, no, nothing. No, don't worry about coming. It's okay. I, I, I just accepted my faith because I know if you really showed up, I'd most likely drop dead. You know what I mean? <laughs> Praise God, he'd be there to raise me up. <laughs> Wouldn't be dead for long. <laughs> We've learned to wait and wait and wait. But you see... Praise God that the book of Acts, in, in, in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, let me just read this to you. And it says, and when the day of Pentecost had fully come. Everybody say fully. When the day of Pentecost had fully come. I want to tell you the day of Pentecost has fully come, amen. Fully come. It wasn't, he just didn't give us a trickle. He just didn't give us a little dab. He just didn't give us a little, little bit. He gave, he gave us the whole package, amen. The whole deal. 
What an amazing thing that the Spirit of God, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were in all in one place, in one accord, and it says that there was a something that happened. Just read on. It's an amazing passage of Scripture. I know we've read it thousands of times. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord, in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Friend, I'm talking about an outpouring of the Spirit that has already come. There was a great sound. Something came from heaven. And I don't know about you, but this human person down here, just like the disciples who are going through life in a negative state, wondering what was going to happen, just like you were saying today about them, their Lord had been crucified. The disciples weren't too sure what was going on. They weren't really, they were, they were thinking, man, there's a lynch mob there they're going to crucify us as well they're going to get with us they didn't know whether they were coming or going but I want to tell you something from heaven something from heaven came and touched these human beings I want to tell you today each and every one of us if you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost there's something in you that this world cannot contain there's something on the inside of you that no devil can stop I want to tell you it's the mighty Holy Spirit power something from heaven came into my life I am no longer a natural man I'm no longer a mere man I today am a man filled with the Holy Ghost and with power hallelujah you can say you old proud thing I want to tell you you can say whatever you like about you but I want to tell you I'm going to declare today that greater is he that is within me than he that's within the world it's not a time to shut up it's a time to jump up it's a time to shout it's a time to declare it's time to say that Jesus Christ is Lord. A lot of people don't want to do this. A lot of people just want some nice kosher things. Let's make it comfortable. Well, I want to tell you, I want God to put a burr in your undie that will cause you to rise up in Jesus' name. You get a burr in your under, underwear, I tell you what, you can't sit comfortable. You just got to find that burr, amen. You just got to get up, amen. Anybody ever had a burr in your undies? He commanded them to wait in Jerusalem for the promise to wait, to tarry. The church has learned to do this, but now the, the day of Pentecost has fully come. They're all in one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing, mighty wind, and it filled the whole house. A rushing, mighty wind. We hear of tornadoes. We hear of all these sort of things that go on. But friend, this wasn't just some little picnic. This wasn't just some little... I want to tell you, friends, the whole place would have been shaken. The whole place that would have been alive and electric with the presence of God. You know what? We can experience that today. If only we just let ourselves go, but oh, we're so reserved. Oh, Jesus. God's saying, would you shut up? Your prayers weary me. Will you get up off your blessed assurance and go out there and lay hands on somebody you might find that I will heal them. <laughs> you might find that I'll start doing something, but I can't do anything if you don't get up. It's got to be a getting up, amen. It's got to be a rising up. And the day of Pentecost had fully come. Praise God. The waiting was over. They were waiting, yeah, they were towering, they were in this upper room, they were, I don't know what they would have been talking about. Thomas was there. <laughs> what do you think he was saying? Praise the Lord, everything's fine. No, he wouldn't have been saying that. <laughs> they, were, they were there, but they, there was one thing they were all accord, they were scared stiff. <laughs> They needed God to help them. They needed, they were, there was a cry that's going out. And, and I believe that there's a fresh cry that's beginning to go out from the church today. There's a rising up. There's a stirring. There's something that's beginning to cry out. God, God, send the fire. Send the fire. Send the mighty Holy Spirit again. Touch us again. Yes. Raise us up, my God. The day of Pentecost, our waiting was over. And it still is over. Amen. The Holy Spirit has arrived and He's still here. How many people know that He's still here? He hasn't gone to sleep. Every revival that's ever happened throughout ages is when men and women realize they didn't have to wait any longer. Can I say this? You don't have to wait any longer to get healed. But I will wait. 
We'll wait for when John Mellor comes. Or we'll wait for when Benny Hinn comes to town. Or we'll wait for this, or you'll wait for that. And when he comes, friend, it, what happens? Nothing much happens. Because God doesn't want you to be relying on somebody else. He wants you to be totally transformed and relying on Him, amen. That you get to know Him. That you get to know the power of His resurrection. That you get to know that Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, is the healer, amen. That you, He will raise you up and He will put something on the inside of you that will cause you to stand strong and be counted in this hour. You don't have to wait any longer. But we've learned to wait and wait. And every time, as I'm talking, I'm walking backwards because I'm going negative when I talk like that. I've got to shut up. I don't want to talk. We've got to start to rise up, amen. We've got to start to speak what God says about himself. We don't have to wait any longer. The comfort of the heal of the Holy Spirit is here now. And, and these people, when, when the Spirit of God got on them and, and, and from going from that upper room experience there where they, were, where they were, I don't know what happened, but something from heaven got into their lives and it totally transformed them, we know. And as Peter and as the rest of them, as they went out from there, it says, when this great sound occurred, a great multitude gathered around. Some of some were perplexed, some of them were, were, were being ridiculing and goodness knows what. But Peter stood in the midst and says, these men are not drunk as you suppose, seeing it is only the ninth hour or the third hour, whatever it was. He said, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Hallelujah. This is an outpouring of the spirit of God. You see, it's the anointing. Everybody say the anointing that breaks the yoke. There was something different about Peter. There was something different about the disciples. Now they carried something. And I want to tell you, it's when the Holy Spirit fully comes, the same Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, the same Holy Spirit that caused Peter and the rest of the disciples to, to be touched with an amazing manifestation. That same Spirit is in you now. You do not have to wait you don't have to wait. If you've got the gifting of God on you, go, man. Get, rise up and do something for Jesus. Amen. Get up there and do something. And, and, and it was an amazing thing that these guys are now speaking about from the anointing, rather. Speaking out of the anointing. And today, that as, as they went, thousands got healed. The comfort of the healer, the Holy Spirit is here now. They went out there and they preached it. Let me just have a quick look at Mark chapter 16. Let's have a look at that. Let's, let's see what, what God did and what God says here. We'll just read from verse 14. And he appeared to them, and he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. I want to ask you today a question. What would Jesus say if he turned up right now? Would he rebuke us? Would, would, he, would he rebuke the unbelief and hard hearts that are in us perhaps? I know he'd encourage us. I know that it, 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 it's a goodness of God that leads us to repentance. It's a goodness of God. How many people it says he that the, knows that he that the Lord loveth, he chastens. He wants to cut away the dead wood in our lives. You've got to hear the chainsaw starting up and, and, and cutting out some dead wood. Anybody got a bit of dead wood you need shut? Jesus, help us. <laughs> Most probably furnace hell with the dead wood that's in the church. <laughs> I don't know where that come from. He appeared to the eleven, they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe on those who had seen him after he was risen. And he said to them, Go into the, all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Friend, we've got to come back to the gospel. Preach the gospel. He who believed and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will, if they, they will take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it by, by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. 
So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Father God, let there be a people that will rise up, that will go out and speak your word and preach your word with boldness. Let there be accompanying signs following in Jesus' name, healing the sick and casting out devils, whatever it is, God. Amen. Let there be, amen. How many people say amen to that? Amen, amen and amen and amen and amen wonder what he would say to us today. When Pentecost had fully come, the disciples were in this upper room and there was a sound of a mighty rushing wind and it filled the whole place where they were sitting. There was divided tongues of fire sat upon each of them and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And after this great phenomenon, after this great experience that, that they had, they just continued to sit. They just continued to sit. They said, well, that was, that was all right, eh? That was nice. No, no, no. By the hair of my chinny chin chin. That's not what they did. Amen. They went out from there. Amen. Friend, we've made church. It's not what God wanted. Amen. This is where we come and get excited and, and worship. And, man, you know what? We, we, it doesn't matter what's happening back there. It's what's happening here. We should just be able to throw our hands up and worship the king and love on him. Amen. It doesn't matter whether you're in tune, out of tune, or no tune. Somewhere or other, God gets it between here and there and makes it sound okay. It's got to be because I've sat beside some of you and some of me. <laughs> but somehow or other it says that God loves the praises of his people. He inhabits the praises of his people. He loves it, amen, and, and that's what he's about. He's, he's, we've just got to get, get, get rid of some of the stuff today, unless you've got this, unless you've got that, unless you've got comfy seats, unless you've got, man, I was talking to a guy the other day and, and I was talking about a church and, and, and I said about the church and he said, it's safe. I thought, what's a safe church? What is a safe church? You really got me thinking. It's safe. You're not going to get challenged. <laughs> not here, amen? I get, how many people get challenged here? Yeah. The burr, you feel a burr. Oh, dear. Oh, the burr in the undie. You gotta get up. You gotta, you gotta shake something. You gotta see. See, they, they just didn't sit there. They, they went out. You see, if if you're waiting for a bus, and the bus comes, and the driver opens up the door, you don't look at him and say, "It's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting." <laughs> Eh? That person would ring somebody up and say, you better come, there's somebody out here that needs a bit of attention. But see, that's what we do the church. God says, it's got a door that's wide open. He says, come on, come on in. And, but we're still waiting. And for the love of me, I don't know what we're waiting for. Because if it turns up, we won't recognize it. Because we really don't know what we're waiting for, but we're waiting for something. If somebody could tell me what we're waiting for, the wait would be a lot better. <laughs> but I don't know what we're waiting for. Do you? Has anybody got a clue what we're waiting for? The bus is pulled up. The door's open. He says, come on in. No, thank you. I'm waiting. <laughs> what for? The next bus? No, I don't think so. I don't know. <laughs> But I'll know when it comes. <laughs> oh, shakabundi. We've got to get rid of some religious stuff, haven't we? Eh? No, you jump off buff for the seat when the bus comes. I've seen people as I'm driving along, and the bus is behind me, and they're sitting in there, and they jump out, and they go like this, hey, pull up. And the bus pulls up, opens the door, and they jump in and say, he said, where are you going? I'm going where you're going. <laughs> How many people want to go where God's going? Get on the bus. <laughs> Dear Jesus, 
I can imagine what my friend's going to tell them. Talk about me. Doug, it's okay. We, it's all right, Doug. We. <laughs> I'm just waiting. No, no, you get up and you get on it. You see, what they did, they, they went out there and then, and then Peter and John goes down to the, to, to, the, to, to, the, to place to pray or wherever they were going. And there's this guy there that, that's, that's been crippled for I don't know how long and he just walks, walks up to him and, and with the boldness now because you see, what I've got to understand, what you've got to understand, Doug, is that something of the Holy Ghost got in there. Chris, you see, we're not just mere men anymore. We got this, this. Ooh, rubber, <laughs> we, we, we got. Scares me that bloke. <laughs> hey, Bill, it's the Holy Ghost, Kendall, isn't it? It is. Come on, Ruth, that's what it's all about. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Something from heaven came down and got involved with this loser that made him a champion, amen. All I had to offer him was brokenness and strife, but he made something beautiful out of my life, hallelujah. You've got to be bold enough to start talking about yourself like that. Don't keep putting yourself down. Hairy Legs loves it. That's right, he said, that's right. You're right, boy, you're right, boy. Amazing what God can do. Don't look at that. Don't look at that. Don't look at that. <laughs> Joe preached for an hour. I can do it too. <laughs> See, we, we receive power to become witnesses, not to be watchers. All the revivers of old did exactly this. In Acts chapter 2, 4, and they were all in one, when they were all there, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. My, my desire for this church is that we're all filled with the Holy Spirit. To be filled with the Holy Spirit, amen. Why don't you throw up your hands right now and say, Lord, fill me afresh. It's okay to do that. It's okay to say, fill, I want a fresh and filling, Lord. You see, if you're empty, you just go and get filled again, Amen. I don't know about you, but I don't, if you're out there working in the kingdom, if you're out there doing something, there's times there you're going to feel empty because you're pouring yourself out, out of my innermost being. The Bible says will flow rivers of living water. This spake here of the Spirit. And so you're out there and you're pouring yourself out and you're pouring yourself out and you're pouring yourself out and you get empty. You, sometimes you feel a bit empty and that's when old hairy legs comes in and gives you a wallop up the side of the head. But I want to tell you, friends, that's a time to get filled again. Get filled again, Amen. Fill me again, Jesus. Fill me. Keep me topped up. Keep me filled with the Spirit of God. They're all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. Malachi, Malachi 4, 5 and 6, speaking of end times, it says, Behold, I will send Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. I want to tell you, friends, there's a lot of fathers in this house. There's a lot of mothers and fathers in this house that I believe that your best days are ahead of you. I'm not just talking religious talk here. I'm not just trying to puff you up. I'm not just trying to make you feel good. But I want to tell you, you are not in this house for just so that you can sit in there so your bunions can grow. I want to tell you, your best days are ahead of you. I want to tell you, there are fathers and mothers in this church that God is going to raise up and you're going to find young people are going to sit at your feet and you're going to be able to speak the wisdom of God into their lives. You're going to help them from going over walls and tragedies and you're going to stop them from getting being messed up and goodness knows what else because somebody cares for them. I do believe today in mothers and fathers being raised up. God is going to do something by His Spirit in this end time. I ought to, I ought to tell you there's been a gulf that's been separated by, by people because we see a kid there that's got ear rings in both ears and, and holes there that you can shoot peas through and they've got what do you call it tattoos on them but friend I want to tell you there's not too many squeaky cleans like that like us <laughs> unscathed with little people but I want to tell you you look out of the youth there today and they're not they're, they're, they're wild out there amen 
I don't agree with all that sort of stuff, but man, I'm not going to stop them from, from me from embracing kids that have got earrings and got tattoos and got goodness knows what, because I want to tell you, God wants those people in the kingdom of God, and we're going to stand there, and we're not going to tell them, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't do this. I've heard all the shouldn't do's that you shouldn't do, but I'm going to tell them one thing that they should do is fall in love with Jesus, amen, and the things of this world and the tattoos, you won't see the tattoos, because God doesn't look at the tattoos, he he doesn't look at their earrings. He looks at their hearts, amen. And their hearts are turned to God and their hearts are going to be turned to their fathers and they're going to find tattooed earrings and piercings and goodness knows what. I've talked to some kids there that got that many piercings in their face. I say, man, when you have a drink, do you leak? I tell you what, there's a lot more Christians that leak. The Spirit of God leaks out of us. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, the four Gospels tell us an amazing story of a Saviour who came to save and to release. Amen. Show us what was available to mankind. Jesus came as a man. He worked with that, under that authority. And this is what he said to us. He said, this is the way, walk ye in it. He said, these things that I do, you shall do also. And even greater things than this shall you do. He showed us how to have victory over the lies of Satan and every attack that he will bring against you. And it's very, very simple. It is written. It is written, amen? God's given us an answer for everything that the enemy would ever throw at us. As a new Christian, all I did was I read the four Gospels. I got to know Jesus the Christ. You must have a personal relationship with the Lord. You've got to fall in love with Him. To, to love Him is to know Him. To know Him is to love Him. Amen. Fall in love with Him. And comes the book of Acts, the outworking of the person of the Holy Spirit. The lives of a human. The outworking. Remember, he said, it's better for you if I go, because when I go, I'm going to send, to another, send you another helper. It's amazing to be filled with the Spirit. Turn to somebody and say, I'm filled with the Spirit. Spirit of God. Acts 1 8 says, You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Acts 2 1 talks about a sound that came from heaven. When the disciples were in any need, the mighty Holy Spirit came and helped them. It's always an answer. God wants to come and show us things that we do not know. For I want to tell you, it's a time for war. It's a time to war. I got, I got that many pages still here, but hallelujah. I'm going to go to the end. How about we stand to our feet? How about you come out here and grab that chauffeur? I pray today that as the chauffeur is blown, that it will stir something in the spirit inside you that will cause you to rise, that God would stir up the deep, deep wells, the deep, deep wells. You know, as I stand here today, I honestly see so much potential, so much potential. I believe this, that's what I see and what God sees is much more than I see. I just wonder if we could just open up our hearts. Would you open up your hearts to God right now? And as the chauffeur is blown, just let the Spirit of God touch you. Amen.